We're speaking now to Paul Horton from SciWem in the UK. Uh, Paul, can you explain to us a little bit about um, your involvement in the organisation of today's conference? Yeah, sure. So, SciWem is one of the institutions that's a main member of the uh, European Water Association. Uh, one of our members and past presidents, Ronnie Faulkner, is involved in the working group on flooding linked to uh, what the Commission's doing. That links very closely into the Water Framework Directive and I sit on one of the groups there that's linked to climate and water, looking at climate change issues under the Water Framework Directive. So the whole thinking behind today was let's look at the flooding directive, see what's happening, see how the flood risk management plans are being developed and how does that link into the Water Framework Directive. And in a, in a slight aside, how are they taking account of the climate change issues? This is the fifth uh, conference of its kind to be held in Brussels. Uh, have you noticed a, uh, a palpable difference in how, in how prevalent the climate, um, the climate issue impinges on all these water questions? Yeah, very much so. I mean, we were, we were certainly in the early days just looking at policy issues and policy issues related directly to the implementation of the, di of the directives. Now, certainly, you're looking at uh, climate change issues coming in a lot more. I mean, today's event, for example, one of the issues that has emerged is that we all know about ra rainfall patterns are going are to be more variable. We're going to get periods of drought and more intense rainfall. But the intensity of the worst events is going to be greater than we'd all anticipated. That's definitely due to the changing climate. And how do you manage that? How do you prepare for an event that used to be one in 200 years and now maybe happens far more frequently? What, what, what do you do? Do you think that the, uh, the two directives, the sister directives, as everyone keeps saying, is the, the, the kind of the terminology, the, the, the lingo, do you think that they, 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 uh, they provide the right framework to deal with, to deal with these changes? They're also daughter directives as well, believe it or not. Um, they, they provide the right framework. It's how they're implemented that, 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 that is the key question. And what happens when you have very extreme events that might lead you to a situation where you have to apply for an exemption? Um, I know the Commission takes a pragmatic view, but at the same time it doesn't want the issue of climate change to be used as a way of, of, of countries looking for exemptions. The, the difficulty is going to come in, in probably the next stage of both the flood risk management plans and the river basin management plans with the Water Framework Directive. Because you have situations where diffuse pollution is a big issue for the Water Framework Directive, and one of the causes of that is, is farming and agriculture. In the floods directive, um, farmland can be used to hold water during periods of intense rainfall. So how do you manage what may seem as a, as a conflict between the two? That's, that's one issue that, that's emerging. And do you think the discussions at today's conference have been beneficial in trying to address these issues? They certainly raised that. They certainly raised them in a public platform, which I haven't seen before. And you've got people sat in the room who are from the Commission, who are from implementing bodies and authorities in different parts of the European Union. So that, that has to be useful. And broadly, in the coming years, do you expect those to be the main, the main obstacles to, towards national implementation of the directives? I see it as being one of the obstacles. The others will be how, how different member states integrate the authorities that deal with uh, the Water Framework Directive and the Floods Directive, because you don't always have the same organisations re responsible for both. So therefore, how do you knit those two together and make sure that everybody is going down the same route? That's probably going to be potentially a bigger obstacle in the future. Paul Horton, thank you very much. Pleasure.